Live from Chicago, this is News 3 Now special coverage of the Democratic National Convention. Right now, the Democratic National Convention getting underway in Chicago. Who is speaking and what we can expect from tonight's event? Plus, former President Trump tries to stick to his economic message as a new poll shows him neck and neck with Vice President Harris in battleground states. And good evening. Thanks for watching News 3 Now at 6. We are live at the Lincoln Park Zoo, the nature boardwalk here in Chicago for the Democratic National Convention. Over the next four days, the Democratic Party will look to come together as it prepares to officially nominate Vice President Kamala Harris as their presidential pick. Each day will have its own theme, and today's is for the people. We'll have team coverage throughout the next four days, and for more on who will be taking the stage, let's go to Brady Mallory live inside the United Center. Hi, Brady. Well, hello there, Susan and I are here, and you can hear that. It is just getting started for night one of the DNC, and we don't have any camels or zebras, but it's kind <laughs> of a zoo here. There's just a lot of people ready for this first night of the Democratic National Convention. Right now, party chair Jamie Harrison is addressing the audience. And it's interesting to think that a month ago, we were at the RNC. I, I, it's crazy yeah. how things have turned and how fast time has passed. It's very true. A lot Where we changed. are is not for people who are afraid of heights. We're at the top, top mm -hmm. of the United Center, but it's a beautiful view looking over the stage. Yeah. The mayor of Chicago, Brandon Johnson, just welcomed everybody here. That got a thunderous applause. And several high-profile people are expected to st take the stage tonight. The night is just beginning, including 2016 presidential nominee Hillary Clinton. Then Dr. Jill Biden will take the stage, and she will introduce President Biden to give the keynote address. That will be the last speech of the evening. President Biden, of course, was go was it this was supposed to be his, his big night his big night his convention until he ended his bid for re-election and it makes you wonder some of the thoughts that must be going through his head at a moment like this uh, but there is a lot of appreciation and gratitude and enthusiasm here for the delegates who say his decision helped the democrats be where they are yeah. today and you can feel that energy sort of re-energize the Democratic campaign as we move closer to the election. And it was really an unprecedented summer. Tonight it's the Democrats turn to show us uh, their vision for America should Vice President Kamala Harris win in November. That's right. And our political reporter, Will Keneally, is right in the middle of the action. He's on the floor here at the United Center. Will, here we go. Yep, that's right. So we're going to actually show you a little bit of a point of view here. We are right next to the Minnesota delegation. Um, so certainly with Governor Tim Walz on the ticket, uh, Minnesota gets front and center billing here. And so this is kind of what the stage looks like if you are a delegate uh, in attendance here tonight. Uh, now, as you mentioned before, uh, this would have been a Biden's big night. Uh, certainly, though, he dropped out and a lot has changed in the weeks since then. Uh, we certainly know that that will change the election. And we spoke with uh, former Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes about how that is shaping up for Wisconsin and what he's expecting to hear from Biden tonight. And I just want to first thank him for everything that he's done, whether it's on the campaign trail or delivering for Americans. And I think that, you know, what I'm expecting to hear is the importance of uh, not just changing the guard, but understanding the importance of the next generation of leadership. Now, Barnes certainly, after his lieutenant governorship, uh, losing that uh, 2020 Senate primary, he's actually started a PAC encouraging younger people to run in part. Now, as we were talking about before, we're expecting Biden to speak later tonight, uh, and we will continue to keep you with live coverage here on the ground. Uh, as you can see, a pumped-up crowd here. But for now, reporting from the United Center floor, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. Thank you, Will. I heard most of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's getting louder yeah. and louder, and the night is just beginning. Yeah. And we will be here all week. All of our crews will be here for the four days of the Democratic National Convention, and we'll see what happens. As we know, as we were talking about, a lot can change in a short amount of time. That's right. Eric and Charlotte, back to you at the Zoom. Brady, Susan, Will, thanks to all of you. And today, thousands gathered 
just a half a mile away from the United Center, March on the DNC. It is a coalition of more than 200 different organizations and started with a rally around noon. The protesters are calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, among other demands. News 3 Now spoke with a protester from Madison who made the two-hour drive down to Chicago for today's rally in March. He says the DNC needs to hear the demands of protesters. I think that you shouldn't have to keep pleading and begging the DNC to do what's right in this case. So it's a bunch of us just going down to make a difference. Protests are expected to continue throughout the week. Now, Chicago police, along with Homeland Security and the United States Secret Service, have all stepped up to secure the convention with a large secure perimeter at both venues. So just how easy is it to get through for delegates? Our Kyle Pazorski gives us a look. We made our way inside meter row here at the United Center to talk to some big names from Wisconsin about their experience going through security and how it compares to that of the Republican convention. It's here where you can't hardly move one inch before bumping into politicians and political operatives, including Wisconsin Democratic Party Chair Ben Wickler. There's a real sense that, that everyone here is safe and also that they can go where they want to go and, and be able to see what they want to see. He tells News 3 now the work by law enforcement to secure the DNC is commendable and one he found no trouble getting through with his credentials. Uh, I think I got everything out of my pocket successfully, so no problem there. Wisconsin radio personality Earl Ingram also caught up with us, saying from his perspective, security here is not as prevalent as it was in Milwaukee. Law enforcement was everywhere. I don't see that. I don't feel that. I don't see their presence. I think if they, I know they're around, but they certainly are not as visible. Throughout the rest of the week, road closures will continue in the area of both the United Center and McCormick Place, causing slowdowns. But once inside, it's what authorities plan, smooth sailing for all attendees. In the United Center, Kyle Pazorski, News 3 Now. Kyle, thank you. Now, happening tomorrow, Vice President Kamala Harris is set to hold an event in Milwaukee on the second day of the Democratic National Convention. The rally will be held at Pfizer Forum, of course, where the Republican National Convention took place just last month. The Harris campaign also confirming today that Vice Presidential nominee Minnesota Governor Tim Walz will join her in Milwaukee. And it's not just the Democrats campaigning in Wisconsin tomorrow. Republican nominee for Vice President, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, will be in Kenosha. He'll be holding a press conference on crime and safety at the Kenosha County Courthouse. That will take place at noon. As Democrats gather for their convention this week, former President Donald Trump and his running mate, J.D. Vance, are in the battleground state of Pennsylvania. And it's a bit of a battleground state blitz, a week of counter-programming to the Democratic National Convention. CBS News' Nicole Skanga has the latest. Former President Donald Trump kicked off one of his busiest campaign weeks ever in reliably red York, Pennsylvania, with his message to make America affordable again. We will put more money into your pockets and create millions and millions of new jobs. We're going to do it like nobody else. Trump hopes to end what Republicans and supporters are calling the Harris honeymoon period. You know, I think that the Harris bump has already happened. But the former president has struggled to stay on his economic message. I'm a better looking person than Kamala. Rifts like that have Trump allies concerned. And if you have a policy debate for president, he wins. Donald Trump, the private uh, the provocateur, the, uh, the showman, may not win this election. CBS News polling says the former president leads among those who say the economy and inflation are major factors in their vote. Trump's running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, also talked economics in Pennsylvania Monday. She wants to make groceries and homes more affordable for American citizens. Well, Kamala Harris, where have you been? Because you've been vice president for about 1,300 days. Day one was three and a half years ago. You should have been doing your job then. Pennsylvania would be a major prize for either party. Ten of the past 12 presidents won the Keystone State. The former president is scheduled to visit four more battleground states later this week, including North Carolina, where Trump will hold an outdoor rally, the first since his assassination attempt a little over a month ago. Nicole Skanga, CBS News. Washington. Former President Trump will visit Michigan on Tuesday. There, the topic will be crime and safety. It will be the president's sixth visit to the state of Michigan this year. 
Well, we want to remind everyone we will be in Chicago all week for the Democratic National Convention. And starting at 8 o'clock tonight, we're going to be streaming extended coverage with special guests, interviews, and more, all during this four-day event. That stream will head into CBS national coverage of the convention. And to watch it, just head to channel3000.com. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, school officials send out a warning on social media safety. Plus, we have more coverage from Chicago as the Democratic National Convention gets underway on this Monday. Stay with us. You're watching News 3 Now at 6, brought to you by Gruber Law Offices. At Gruber Law Offices, you pay us nothing until we win your case. It costs you nothing up front to get the results and compensation you deserve. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. A1 Furniture and Mattress is closing their giant showroom, and that means the best prices ever. Everything must go. Over a million dollars in inventory must be sold. Name brands at huge discounts for every room. Store closing sale on now at A1 Furniture and Mattress. Tens of millions of roofs across America are failing wearing out decades early and leaking, oftentimes without you knowing about it, causing tremendous damage. Here's how you know you have a problem with your roof. Black streaking, your roof looks rough, or granules shedding off into your gutters or showing up in your driveway. Your roof is wearing out too fast and it's going to cost you a bundle. RoofMax makes your roof like new by strengthening and rejuvenating it. So give us a call and we'll give you a free assessment to see if your roof qualifies. Sanctuary cities protect illegal immigrant criminals from being deported, like an illegal immigrant arrested for battery in Madison. Instead of being deported, he was released and went on to assault several more women, including a 13-year-old girl. Senator Tammy Baldwin voted nine times to support federal funding for sanctuary cities that release dangerous illegals back onto our streets. And Baldwin voted for amnesty for 11 million illegals, including criminals. Tell Senator Baldwin, stop protecting illegal immigrants and start protecting Wisconsin. A1 Furniture and Mattress is closing their giant showroom, and that means the best prices ever. Everything must go. Over a million dollars in inventory must be sold. Name brands at huge discounts for every room. Store closing sale on now at A1 Furniture and Mattress. Tomorrow on News 3 Now This Morning, our live coverage continues of the DNC from Chicago. We'll set the stage for day two of the convention. We'll get you ready. Join us tomorrow from 4.30 to 7 on News 3 Now This Morning. Watching News 3 now at 6, moving forward. And welcome back to our coverage of the Democratic National Convention here in Chicago. Right now, we're going to step away from our convention coverage for just a bit. Let's head back to our Madison studio where News 3 now's Jalen Banks is standing by. Good evening to you, Jalen. Good evening, Charlotte and Eric. Now to some more local news. Parents are sending their kids back to school in just a few weeks. Tanasia Shaw spoke to community leaders who have a social media warning ahead of the first day of school. Boards like this are often bought or created ahead of the school year. But local officials are asking parents to think before posting online. We know the sign boards are cute. Just make sure you're, you're really toning down what you're putting on there for the safety of the children. Parents are gearing up and preparing for the 2024-25 school year. Madison law enforcement is asking parents to review what they post online about their child's big day. Specifically, avoiding popular trends like these sign boards. It'd be like you walking around with your address on your shirt. Would you want anybody to know your home address? No, there's easy ways that people can figure out. If you say, I go to Sherman Middle School, well, it's really easy to find out where Sherman Middle School is. This is important not only on the first day of school, but throughout the school year. Madison School District says as long as the school isn't directly tagged in a post, you're good to go. District policy, I think, as long as you're not tagging the school directly um, and just sharing, you know, and making it a very personal piece, you know, um, and you're not sharing, you know, the kid's social security number or anything uh, that egregious, I think, uh, you know, those sort of posts are, are fine. Madison Police Department says they have a special unit for cases involving kids. We're also proactively then out looking to see to stop the predators where we can. And it really helps us if we don't have all those information, all that information out there about kids that uh, is really easy to get for predators. Reporting in Madison. Kids are going to be for eight hours a day. Um, and that makes them really vulnerable with all that information out there. News 3 Now, Tanasia Shaw. 
Tanasia, thank you. Universities of Wisconsin President Jay Rothman announced a new budget proposal today asking for the state for more than $400 million in funding towards the UW system. Our Maddie Heimsch is here with more on the budget. Maddie? Yeah, Jalen Rothman says the proposal is in an attempt to get Wisconsin, quote, up to the middle. The Badger State currently ranking 43rd out of 50 states when it comes to public funding of higher education. To reach the middle, Rothman says schools need an additional $457 million annually. He says the state's current ranking in the bottom 10, while Illinois, Michigan, Iowa, and Minnesota all rank in the top 10, indicates a pattern of neglect for students in Wisconsin. With classes about to start, we need to do better for our students and parents. Budgets reflect priorities. To win the war for talent, it's going to take public funding that is competitive and gets us up to the middle in public funding per student. He says that money would go towards general wage increases for staff, covering inflationary cost increases, extending the Wisconsin tuition promise, and creating a new artificial intelligence hub. Rothman says it's also aimed at retaining accessibility. Over the last two years, more than five branch campuses have closed, cutting down on opportunities for rural students. The two-year request will go to the Board of Regents on Thursday, then if approved, will go to Governor Tony Evers' desk for consideration. Sounds good, Maddie. Thank you. There's still more ahead on News 3 Now at 6. Coming up, Eric and Charlotte return with a look at the history between the DNC and Chicago. And temperatures cooling down this week. We'll have a complete look at your first one forecast after the break. Get an 11% rebate on your big projects at Menards. For over 65 years, Menards has been the destination for post-frame buildings. Whether it's for protecting equipment or you just need a place to keep your toys, Menards has the post-frame building for you. Get free estimates fast in-store or on Menards.com. Plus, get an 11% rebate on everything today. There's no limit to what you can say. Save big money at Menards. We know the fentanyl coming from Mexico and China is a threat here in Wisconsin. It's why Tammy Baldwin is working to stop it. And Tammy passed the bipartisan Fend Off Fentanyl Act. It takes on the Mexican cartels and the fentanyl coming from China. And Tammy Baldwin voted 32 times to strengthen our border. 32 times to increase border patrols. And technology to keep illegal drugs out. Because Senator Baldwin knows keeping us safe is her first priority. Tell Tammy Baldwin to keep securing our borders. 50 years ago, I prayed this prayer, and it changed my life, and it can change your life. You see, I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired, and my life was in a mess. And I just got on my knees one night, and I said, God, I've sinned against you. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And I said, I believe Jesus Christ is your son, and I believe that he took my sins to the cross, and he died and shed his blood for my sins, and that he was buried and that you raised him to life, and I'd like to invite him to come into my heart right now. And I prayed that prayer, and God heard my prayer, and he forgave me, and he'll forgive you, and he'll cleanse you and change your life starting today. Just pray this prayer. It says, say, God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I believe Jesus is your son. I want to trust him as my Savior and follow him as my Lord from this day forward. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to call right now that number that's on the screen. Call that number, and may God bless you. TDS Fiber Internet makes our home smarter. Working, playing, living, learning. It's all better with TDS Fiber Internet because it's faster, more reliable. It's award-winning internet served up by friendly local folks. It's what keeps us connected, and isn't that what it's all about? Say hello to internet that hits different. Say hello to TDS. You're watching News 3 Now at 6, moving forward. And welcome back again once again to Chicago, the city of political conventions. That is right. Chicago holds the record for hosting the most political conventions of any American city. 26 in all, dating all the way back to Abraham Lincoln's presidential nomination, and that was in 1860. The Chicago convention that probably comes to mind for most of us, though, is the 1968 DNC, and it actually has quite a few historical echoes today. 
That year, like 2024, saw a sitting president choose to not seek re-election. Their vice president landing at the top of the ticket and a presidential candidate shot on the campaign trail. And like today, a foreign policy issue was at the center of turmoil within the Democratic Party and led to protest in the streets. The turmoil in the 60s was of a different magnitude, but I think politically both conventions speak to some of the same issues. Every convention, every party convention, the leadership hopes that coming out of it, they'll get a bounce. Things will look better after the convention for their candidates than it did before the convention. And that's been fairly typically true. In 1968, the exact opposite, of course, happened for the Democrats. As for why Chicago plays host to so many political conventions, historian David Farber says it likely comes down to logistics and political calculations. Well, we turn to weather now. Temperatures cooler than normal this week. Let's go to meteorologist Jacob Montesano back in Madison. He has a complete look at our first one forecast. Jacob? Thanks, Eric. Temperatures are also going to remain a little bit below average for the rest of this week, at least the work week, though, because by next weekend, we are going to see those temperatures begin to warm back up. But in general, both when temperatures are below and then above average, we are going to remain very dry for the next seven to 10 days. So looking specifically at those rain chances, we don't have much of it. Now, Thursday night into Friday, we could see a stray shower also Saturday and Sunday during the day, but for the most part, we're not expecting much, even if it does rain, as we're expecting mainly dry conditions for both the overnight hours and daytime hours of the next seven days. And looking specifically at the total precipitation, we're expected a lot of southern Wisconsin will struggle to get to even a tenth of an inch of rainfall over the next seven days. So it's going to be very dry, but we definitely could afford this dry period, considering we are above average for the entire year. So looking at the evening forecast, we are going to see temperatures in the lower 70s, upper 60s. Definitely get out and enjoy the weather if you can. But even if you can't, it's going to be very nice for the rest of the week. Now, later in the night into early tomorrow morning, it may get a little chilly with uh, low temperatures dropping into the lower 50s. But then by the afternoon, we're going to see very nice temperatures. Highs will be in the 70s for much of the area with partly sunny to mostly sunny skies. And 70s will continue for the rest of the work week. But looking at the muggy meter, although it's going to be comfortable through about Thursday to Friday, we are going to see the humidity values begin to increase over the weekend where we are going to be in that humid level. Dew points will get up to around 70. Actual temperatures will possibly easily get to the 80s, maybe even lower 90s. But right now we do have a forecasted high of around 87 for Sunday and Monday. And those are the two warmest days of the 10 day forecast. So warmer temperatures over the weekend into the early portion of next week, but we still are expecting mostly dry conditions, just a little bit of a better chance of rainfall, but still not expecting much for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And as we head into next week, temperatures do look to start to cool off slowly after Monday with a little bit of a better chance of rainfall towards the end of the week, but a lot can still change between now and then as it is 10 days out. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. The alarming spike in inflation soaring to its highest level in nearly 40 years. That is called Bidenomics. Gas prices rose again today, reaching a new all-time high. We're still dealing with inflation, and we've got super high interest rates at the same time. Bidenomics is working. Two-thirds of Americans are just struggling to make ends meet. And this comes after Friday's jobs report showing a spike in unemployment. And we are very proud of Bidenomics. At USA Insulation, we fix hot homes. Over 7 out of 10 homes are poorly insulated. Is yours? Here are some of the signs. Is your house too cold in the winter? Is it too hot in the summer? Does your furnace and AC run almost nonstop? Do you have different temperatures in different rooms? Are your energy bills too high? You don't need a new home. You need better insulation. And right now, when we foam your walls, we'll insulate your attic for free. USA Insulation. This is you, and you are why we do what we do. Each and every one of you are wonderful, amazing people. So we'll treat you that way on your journey of trusted care, because the way you, 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 and you feel matters. 
Unity Point Health Meritor, a partner of UW Health. Know how much you matter to this world. Kyle just made a decision that would change his whole world. Hey, you're sober? You drive. Kyle just made a decision that would change his whole world. Drive sober or get pulled over. I'm Tammy Baldwin. I approve this message. I'm the proud son of a single mom. My mom worked nice to provide for us. My mom worked 80 hours a week. But Eric Hovde thinks if you have a single mom, you're going to be poor or a drug addict? That is a direct path to a life of poverty. It leads to higher drug rates. That just shows Eric Hovde is ignorant. Come on, I'm successful today because of my mom. I learned my work ethic from my mom, my single mom. What is wrong with this guy? Watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back live to Chicago. And while Vice President Kamala Harris may have the tailwinds of favorable polling like we showed earlier, inflation has been a challenge for her campaign. The issue is perhaps most prevalent at the gas pump. Our Kyle Pazorski spoke to some who shared their thoughts on the price per gallon. 11. That's the number of times the Democratic National Convention has been held in Chicago. But there is a different number people may be taking notice of on their way to the Windy City this year. 341, the current national average price for a gallon of regular unleaded gas. So I definitely noticed gas prices. Inflation has steadily gone up in the U.S. dating back for decades with gas prices following suit. Take 1996, for example. During the middle of the Clinton administration, the national average was $1.23. Previous to that in 1968, when Huber Humphrey got the nom, prices were just 34 cents per gallon. What would you give to have prices like they were in 68? Well, um, <laughs> I would give a boat. <laughs> but this isn't the whole story. Adjusted for our current buying power, the same gallon from 1996 would cost 246 today. Compare that to the 2024 national average, and it's only a 28% increase. 1968's 34 cents per gallon turns into 306, only 10% cheaper than right now. Some we spoke with say, no matter what it is, there is well, not we, too much we, they can do about it. We'll do what we need to do, you know, just survive. We've got to accept the prices, that's it. Others believing if more people are conscious about prices, the better. If rising prices makes people more aware of the gas they use, then maybe that's going to help us turn in a different direction. And that's Kyle Pazorski reporting. That's all the time we have for now. Coming up at 8 o'clock tonight, we're going to be streaming a recap of the day's events over on channel3000.com. Is this a great view or what? It's Looking gorgeous. back at downtown, we're at the Lincoln Park too. Mm -hmm. the Nature Boardwalk here. We'll have the biggest stories of the day, interviews with some of those attending. But for now, thanks for watching News 3 Now at 6, and we'll see you back here later tonight.